teaching and assessing reading fluency and comprehension. As educators, it is important to learn how to effectively teach and assess reading fluency and comprehension in order to strengthen our students' reading abilities as well as enhance our teaching practices. Teaching and assessing reading comprehension are essential components to what students need in order to achieve success in reading. It's important for us as educators to adjust our instruction based on the individual needs of each of our students. In this presentation, first we will go over teaching and assessing reading fluency. Reading fluency is a student's ability to read with accuracy, an appropriate rate, and with expression. The goal of reading fluency is to allow students to read with automaticity. This will help to free their mind and be able to enjoy the text that they're reading and focus on the comprehension. The ultimate goal for teaching reading fluency is to increase word recognition or the smoothness of reading. So the rate, the pace of reading, the expression, appropriate phrasing, and when students are able to pay attention to the situation. So when students grasp the idea of fluency most is when they are listening and observing to others as they read aloud. So it is crucial for educators to think about the skills and to model the necessary skills needed in order to become fluent readers. Effective strategies for teaching reading fluency consist of guided oral reading and reading aloud. So th this helps educators to provide assistance to increase the students' fluency. It gives the opportunity for teachers to increase student vocabulary, present new information, allow the students to see good sentence structure, and to hear another person reading and how it should sound. And it provides the opportunity for students to have conversations about the stories rather than focusing on the decoding aspect of the reading. When teaching reading fluency, it is crucial to provide the written text for the students so that the students can follow along as you read. It is important also to introduce and review the text with the students prior to reading in order to activate background knowledge so that students are to comprehend the story while you're reading. Students also reading together and taking turns reading can help to develop reading fluency so they're able to hear different ways of reading the story. Have students write down the difficult words while they're reading so that late in a later time the teacher can go over them so that they're not focusing on the decoding part of the reading but rather than the flow. And if students are struggling, Using repeated texts often helps students to improve their speed, precision, and comprehension because they're reading the story several times. When te Here are helpful tips in order to teach reading fluency. Allow the student to read texts that they find interesting. This will help to increase their motivation and interest of reading. Recording student reading and playing it back for them can also help educators to provide feedback to these students so that they are setting fluency goals for themselves. And audio and ebooks can also help to teach reading fluency because students can listen while they follow along and they can highlight and identify words that they don't know and the computer software often can help them to figure out those words so that they don't get caught up in the comprehension aspect of reading. Another helpful tip is choral repeated reading. This is designed for students who can comprehend material that is read to them, but because of their difficulty with word identification and decoding, they are unable to read the materials as fast and as accurately as other students. This often happens because their listening comprehension level is higher than their reading comprehension level. So this allows for discussions about the reading and to have them repeatedly reading the story so that they get familiar with the text. Also having a set time for reading each day to ensure consistency in reading and applying these skills throughout the day. Reading fluency is the element of reading that is assessed and monitored the most. Assessment of reading fluency is according to the number of words read correctly per minute and calculated by the number of errors found.
When assessing reading fluency, it is important to consider the three parts of reading fluency. The rate of reading, the accuracy of word reading, and the prosody or expression of a student's reading. The rate in reading and accuracy of word reading are often predictors of effective fluency. Prosody is not necessarily an effective predictor of fluency, however it is important for a student to be able to show those skills. It is crucial for students to establish fluency goals for themselves because it gives the educator the opportunity to provide feedback for their students to show them their strengths and weaknesses in their reading and gives students the opportunity to monitor their, their own progress, which serves as a motivation for them and allows them to set goals for themselves and goals according to the progress that they're making. For example, if a student is struggling with their fluency goals, they could add one or more words per minute a week just so that they are able to achieve their goals and make new ones for the needs that they have. Oftentimes when students are not making sufficient progress in the classroom on their reading fluency, RTI comes in and helps to supply the necessary interventions needed for them to make progress. Oftentimes, students can receive intervention up to four to five times a week according to their specific fluency needs. An oral reading test is taken in order to determine where a child stands in their reading, and certain interventions are given based on those specific needs, and adjustments are made in order to develop these skills necessary to effectively read. In this part of the presentation, we are going to talk about teaching and assessing reading comprehension. Reading comprehension is considered the core of reading and one of the main objectives regarding reading instruction. Reading comprehension is a child's ability to read a text, process it, and understand its meaning. Students who struggle with reading comprehension often have trouble verbally and non-verbally expressing their ideas, having difficulty remembering and understanding what they read, in addition to having a hard time following directions. There are several strategies for teaching reading comprehension. These skills can often be done during a read aloud, where the educator can model and reinforce these skills that they can apply during their independent reading. Making connections, asking questions, and making mind movies are all strategies that students can use and apply during their reading in order to enhance their reading comprehension skills. Other reading comprehension strategies include making inferences where students are combining what they already know with clues from the story to create new ideas. Figuring out what is important in the story is also a crucial aspect of reading comprehension. During fiction texts, it is important for students to determine the characters, setting, problem, in order to show their reading comprehension skills. Whereas in a nonfiction text, they're looking more at the text features and the main ideas of each topic in order to comprehend what they are reading. When students are able to grasp the strategies mentioned in the previous slides, they are able to take the strategies and apply them in during their independent reading, where they can monitor their own comprehension. This can include using graphic organizers, drawing pictures about the story, or using story maps in order to collect their ideas about the story. When readers make use of their ability and understanding to visualize the text in their heads, they are taking part in visualization, which enhances their ability to comprehend the text. Assessing reading comprehension can involve informal and formal assessments. The formal assessments typically include students reading a passage or text that is appropriately leveled for the student and asking explicit detailed questions about the content. For example, informal reading inventory, also known as the qualitative reading inventory, is a formal assessment used to assess reading comprehension. There are also different ways to monitor reading comprehension. For example, instead of questions about facts found directly in the text, the child could be asked to answer questions about the information that is implied 
or to retell the story in their own words. These are informal ways of assessing reading comprehension, which also gives students another outlet in order to express their ideas. Since reading comprehension is the most problematic form of reading to access, it is important to assess students' reading comprehension in a way that they can express their ideas. So, teacher evaluation is based on whether a student can verbally explain what they read and can about the text in terms of an informal assessment. Maze or closed passages are a good way to assess students in understanding a text because several words in the text are deleted it is up to the student to use their background knowledge, the content, and the vocabulary in order to fill in the blanks. Retelling a story also enhances a student's reading comprehension and is a good outlet for students to tell what they know about a story by writing it, verbally explaining it, or drawing it, where they can show the characters, main ideas of the story, as well as the problem and solution so that they can give a good idea of where they stand in reading comprehension. In our Strategies for Teaching Students with Learning and Behavior Problems book required for the class, it outlines 12 assessments that you could use for reading comprehension. These offer a variety of elements in terms of age and areas to be tested in order to determine the strengths and weaknesses of students' reading comprehension in order to adjust instruction and teach students the next necessary skills in order to become efficient and effective readers. So below are several of these assessments listed on that table. Progress in the areas of reading fluency and comprehension. It is important to think about the three tiers of support in order to help these struggling students get the instruction and intervention that they need. Below are listed the five components that are crucial in order to meet these students' needs, which help to determine the skills and strategies that the student may need, monitor their progress, and adapt the instruction according to what will help them to be successful as readers. Here are the list of references we used for our presentation. We hope that you take the information learned and apply it to your teaching practices to adjust your instruction on teaching and assessing reading fluency and comprehension. If you have any questions on our presentation, please feel free to send us either a message or write a comment in the discussion, and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Me, Ellen, and Bridget, thank you for listening to our presentation, and we hope you enjoyed it.